The United Kingdom, together since 1707, but for how much longer? The results of the 2014 Scottish independence referendum were supposed to settle the issue of the integrity of the UK for a generation. But Brexit seems to have opened it up again rather sooner. The practical difficulties of Brexit have also raised profound questions over the future of Northern Ireland. Gordon Brown's warning today was stark. We must wake up to the fact that the Union is more at risk now and in greater danger than in 312 years of its history. The primary culprits, according to the former Prime Minister, are the SNP push for what might be termed a hard Skexit, with the party now proposing, unlike in 2014, to leave the UK customs area and ditch Stirling. And on the other hand, he blames an embrace of English nationalism from Boris Johnson, the likely next Conservative leader. But let's take a step back. Abstracting from the political rhetoric, has support for the union among the general UK population actually diminished? Support for Scottish independence, though it has picked up since the Brexit vote, still falls short of a majority. Nevertheless, there is plainly growing concern. Polling found that 58% of people in England, 59% in Scotland, 54% in Wales and 60% in Northern Ireland believe that Brexit has made the breakup of the UK more likely. The Conservative Party certainly seems to have become insouciant about the future of the Union. A recent YouGov poll of 900 Tory members showed 63% would prefer Brexit to go ahead even if it led to Scottish independence, while 59% would want Brexit even if it meant Northern Ireland leaving. But are fears over the integrity of the Union exaggerated? Gordon Brown is entitled to say there is some risk and the nationalists, Scottish nationalists will try to exploit whenever they can anything that happens elsewhere in the United Kingdom to advance their cause. But mortal risk, I think, is overdoing it. It's not just overdoing it, I think it's incorrect. Uh, because uh, not only is there no evidence that Scotland is dramatically going to embrace independence, regardless of whether Boris becomes prime minister or not, you couldn't just have an independence referendum in Scotland two weeks later based on do you, you approve of Boris Johnson becoming Prime Minister. Within a year, Boris Johnson will either be a great success of Prime Minister, if he becomes Prime Minister in the first place, or he will have failed to deliver and have been thrown out by an ungrateful nation and an ungrateful Conservative Party. So either way, uh, independence for Scotland is not relevant. Others, though, say the possible end of the union has been a long time coming. Well, we got to this juncture uh, because uh, very significant proportions of the Welsh and Scottish people lost faith in the, in the British state in both Whitehall and Westminster and thought they could do better by their own people by uh, getting devolution and perhaps, uh, perhaps independence. Now Brexit is really important here because both those national nationalist programmes have depended on, have been closely allied with membership of the European Union. And suddenly you get an essentially English nationalism, which is both kind of free trading, but also deeply nationalist in a 1970s uh, uh, sort of way, profoundly threatening that vision. Above all, it's going to be Brexit, or the factors that underlie Brexit, which uh, will help break up the union. Nothing is inevitable. But holding this three centuries old union together does seem to be getting harder. Andrew Mitchell is still with us and we're joined by the SNP's Dr Philippa Whitford. Good evening. Um, Good evening. You must be so excited about Boris Johnson potentially becoming Prime Minister. He's a gift to people like you who would uh, like Scottish independence. Well, it might seem like that, but we actually take a wider view. It's like the comments that are made um, you know, that we are revelling in Brexit and revelling in a no-deal Brexit because it will hasten independence. You know, we're not planting charges across the Solway Fault and sailing off into the Atlantic. We will still be here in the British Isles. Boris will affect us. A no-deal Brexit would affect us. And actually, the SNP and indeed the Scottish Government have relentlessly been working to try and stop Brexit. So if we wanted to use these things for independence... Are, but as people who are fans of referendum and respecting the will of the people, you don't really sound like you're respecting 
as you say, being in the UK ours with what the UK as a whole voted for. Well, so that's why people may not necessarily believe you when you say you're not excited about we, a Boris Johnson if we prime didn't, ministership. If we didn't respect referendums, then when we won 56 out of 59 MPs, we might have followed Margaret Thatcher's uh, answer that that would lead to independence and ignore the 2014 referendum. We didn't. That's why we're still here. But Scotland voted 62% to remain. Northern Ireland voted 56. So two nations voted to stay and two voted to leave. But you, you so can't, in you... our family of nations, there could have been some effort to give a special uh, outcome to Northern Ireland and Scotland that would have would have respected that. Gordon Brown today, not... though, said that the Scottish independence now on offer is more extreme than the one that was on offer in 2014, which didn't get week? through. Well, for instance, he gave an example of Scottish currency moving away from the pound, which was something that was agreed at the SNP conference, not quite yet, but in the future. Why would that then get through? Uh, well, quite simply because, if you remember to 2014, when Alex Salmond proposed a currency union, because it would actually have helped the sterling area not to lose 10% of its uh, sterling area and economy, and would have been the smoothest transition, that was thrown back in no, our no, faces. But the point is, so, is of it, course, it, we're not going to say again, oh, we'll have a currency union again. That's been turned down. We're not offering but that. But it is a, a more extreme it's version not, of it. You don't accept that at all. At all. But, but are you not in any way, having watched Brexit up close as an MP, are you not in any way put off trying to make Scotland independent, seeing how hard it is to detangle... No. No, Brexit's never been done before. We've never had a country trying to come out of a trade bloc. Independence and independence from the UK has been done multiple times. That is a well-trodden path with international law and norms of how you debate these things. One of the issues around Brexit is the Prime Minister at the moment said she would consult across the House, she would consult across the UK and come up with a vision I... of a vision of Brexit before going to Europe, and she never did. But, so but you're, she... you could these words could come back to haunt you because you're in danger of saying it sounds like it's simple to do this. No, I'm not at all saying it's simple. But we're not going to claim it's simple. We're not going to go to the UK and with not nothing with, written. And you're not. And, off and we're all. not going to promise cake and eat it. The problem is the lies that were told in 2016, the red lines that Theresa May painted herself into a corner with, which were utterly contradictory, leaving the single market. Market, but no border in Ireland, and then promising it was the work of an afternoon, okay, which well, was Boris well, Johnson. Boris Johnson, some would say, even if it's not being admitted here, is a gift to the SNP. Ruth Davison, the leader of the Scottish Tories, safe to say she isn't a fan. She didn't support it. She supported Stadia Javid. But also your own members haven't made this an easy argument for you at the moment. They don't value the union anymore. We just heard that statistic. The YouGov poll found 63% of Tory members would prefer Brexit to be delivered than keep Scotland in the union. What has happened to the Conservative Party? You seem to be overrun by Brexit. Well, that shows the importance of delivering on the decision of the British people in the referendum. But uh, m once we get through this, this dreadful period over Brexit, I want to try and persuade Philippa and her colleagues that as a family of four nations, we are stronger together. I am a unionist How from the top of my head Boris to the Johnson? top of my toes. And Boris, I can tell you, Boris is a one nation unionist politician. He believes in the union. And I hope very much that under his premiership, he will uh, extend Ian Blackford, in, he will, the leader he of the will SNP extend in, the Commons, in every way him a racist last he will week. extend in every way the uh, courtesies between the devolved administrations and in Westminster and that he will work hard to make sure that our union matters as much to all four corners of the kingdom as it has in the past. Was your head in your hands when you saw that statistic, though, from your Conservative members? It's hardly helpful, is it? No, but I think it underlines how in deeply divisive this period is and why we've got to get through by October the 31st. Gordon Brown today was talking about how no deal Brexit really could be the end of the union. Do you fear that? Well, I don't want a no-deal Brexit. I want a deal. But I'm, I do not believe that by extending beyond October the 31st, we make that deal more likely. We've got to say all the cards are on the table. We're leaving on the 31st. We want a deal. Now let's get on and deliver it. Come what may, we'll see what happens. Thank you very much to both of you.